Hi, I'm Sam Dillard, Product Manager with Influx Data. And I'm Jay Clifford, Developer Advocate here at Influx Data. And today we're going to be talking about creating your own custom InfluxDB endpoint. So Jay, let's start with the basics. Tell us what a custom InfluxDB endpoint is. Well, Sam, Influx Data has this awesome new feature called API Invocable Scripts. And this is for Influx Data Cloud. So let's take a look at it. Essentially, what we're doing is we're allowing developers to create custom Flux scripts and assign them to API endpoints that they make and define themselves. This allows them to call them via their own application. Wow. OK, cool. So are these some example use cases right here or what? Yeah, so when looking at this use case, I saw two main examples. That was downsampling and transformation. So when we think of downsampling normally, that's normally governed by InfluxDB. You set it as a task, and then it iterates off at a second or a minute interval. What this allows you to do is actually do event-based downsampling. So the app triggers when downsampling happens. And this is great if the app has more visibility than InfluxDB when more data is coming into InfluxDB. Another cool one, and my personal favorite, is custom transformation. So picture this. We have our SQL database. We have InfluxDB with time series data. Imagine I want to grab all that data from my SQL database merge it with my InfluxDB time series data, and send that back to my customer application. So I can do that all from calling one function here because it's triggering my Flux query. Wow, OK, that's incredibly powerful. So downsampling and data transformations have been a thing that you can do with Influx in, in the past. Why would somebody, or what are the benefits of doing it this way? So there's plenty of benefits, right? But I see three distinct ones. The first is extensibility. So what many developers wanted was the ability to add custom code or custom extensibility to InfluxDB, but without actually having to write anything into their client application. What this enables you to do is write custom Flux code on server side, assign it to a endpoint, and call it from your application. The cool thing about this is, since this is decoupled, if I want to change the behavior of my Flux code, it doesn't change the endpoint, which means I can simply keep calling the endpoint um, and change the Flux behavior and, change, and see different data. The second thing is interoperability. So the cool thing about this is when we're talking about architectures that are pre-existing and we want to add InfluxDB, a simple way of integrating now is through API invocable scripts. Because all I need to do is call the endpoint to receive the data or do the transformation I want to without needing to install any client libraries or pre-compile any code within my client application. And lastly is security. And that's an extremely important one. So again, since our scripts are on server side, we actually don't send any of our queries to InfluxDB. And this is great for preventing man-in-the-middle attacks or query injection. Right on. Well, as an IoT guy, security and interoperability are top of mind. OK, so switching gears, if I'm a user or an admin, walk me through how I would create one of these. Yeah, of course. So it's actually pretty easy. There's three ways you can go about it. Number one, you can do it via the REST API. Two my personal favorite via the VS Code plugin. And number three, you can dynamically create them within one of our client libraries. Now, it's, if we take this from a high level view, it's actually quite simple in its structure. First, what I need to do is define a unique endpoint. So in this case, I've defined machine health as my unique endpoint. Next, I need to define my custom Flux query. So in this case, we just wrote some pseudocode right here. So I'm essentially going to collect some data from my bucket from a specific time range. I'm going to filter by the machine. And then I am going to return the total duration of each state that that machine was in. Amazing. That's, that sounds very valuable. So you mentioned this is pseudocode. I imagine underneath is probably some raw static flux code. Is there a way to make this query dynamic so that it can change what it, what it returns to you? Yeah, I get you. So essentially, there's a core bit of functionality that we're missing here, which is parameterization. So this allows me to do the following. So I could parameterize this. I could parameterize this. And I can parameterize this. 
And what I can do is send these values for these parameters within the payload of the request. And this allows me to dynamically change these values before the Flux queries run. Okay, that's awesome. So let me get this straight. If, if you create this machine health endpoint, and I'm some user in your organization, and I've got maybe my own bucket or maybe my own set of machines that I want to monitor the health of, I can inject my, my own bucket, maybe my own time range, whatever, but also my own machine IDs into this query and get my own data back? Yep, exactly. That is cool. OK, mm -hmm. thanks, Jay. So there you have it. That's creating custom InfluxDB endpoints. Hopefully that was helpful, and can't wait to see what you build with it. <laughs>